Episode number something, July the 1st, which is a Wednesday. Hope you guys enjoyed that band that was dismissed. They're from New Hampshire. Um, I really enjoy their stuff. Uh, I got in contact with them on Facebook, and I think they're doing shows all throughout um, New Hampshire and um, some other northern states. I'm not sure if they're going up to Canada, to Nova Scotia or not, but if you guys have the chance to get up or down to see them, definitely check them out. They're pretty sweet. Um, another band that I'm really excited about is Mortal Treason. Um, they're one of the older metalcore bands from the early 2000s that kind of defined metalcore. And I don't really know how you define them. They're, they're just like a hardcore band, but they have a lot more death metal um, elements to their stuff. And um, they're playing in Huntsville on July the 3rd. Um, I forget which venue that they're playing, but they're playing with some other bands. I think Phineas is going to be there. I could be wrong. And there's some other people that are going to be there that are local to uh, Huntsville. But if you guys have a chance, check them out. Um, I'm not sure if it was Seth or is it TJ, but one of the guys, like a professional BMXer, um, I think he's playing that show. Um, a lot of the guys went on to start other bands, um, like War of Ages, although I don't think any of the original Mortal Treason guys are in War of Ages anymore, but they did play for that band. So there's some history within that band, and they, I think they've started a lot of other bands. Uh, Misery Chasen is one of them, and uh, some other bands. They're really cool because they, they were in the time period of the early Under Oath um, starting of things, and this is where Amy Fiddler comes in as well, from uh, Amy Fleischer from Fiddler Records, where she put out Dashboard and... And she was involved in the whole Southern Florida um, explosion of metal. And so th- in that same time period, everybody was playing shows all around Huntsville, Florida. And that music scene was just ginormous. Um, and this is where, you know, 2003 comes around. And then you have people starting to actually do, you know, tons and tons of shows and getting, you know, fairly popular. And you have Under Oath completely exploding um, and turning into a living, breathing organism where, you know, they're still doing shows to this day. Um, So definitely check out uh, Mortal Treason. I think you guys really enjoy it. 
I was on artofmanliness.com, and I think it's really cool about them. They've got um, just different ideas about um, just men's shit, pretty much. Uh, anything that has to do with being a dude, they've got um, some interesting ideas. And they had an article um, called How to Develop Situational Awareness of Jason Bourne by Brett and Kate McKay. And they were going through some of the different um, concepts and being situationally aware. I think it's really interesting the fact that they're bringing this to a wider audience. And for us contractors, military people, um, it's really important that we kind of talk about those ideas within our daily lives um, with the people that we know who don't aren't, aren't in the industry of defense and protection and shit like that. Um, it's not normal for a person to look behind them scan, make sure there's no one following them, you know, and, and keep an eye on what is around you. Um, I was really, you know, kind of taken, uh, aback in a way because that article really went through the different ways and different philosophies of being situationally aware within your everyday life, which the average person doesn't really know about. And each of us has a different way of, of, you know, of of doing things. I know a a friend of mine, he uh, carries a SIG 226 in his, you know, in his, in his uh, back all the time, Um, a six hour, a nine millimeter. And, you know, I'm Jesus Christ, it's a huge weapon to me, at least to carry around in civilian life. You know, if you don't want to, you know open carry. It's a pretty big weapon, but he keeps it on him 24 seven and he's never without it. And I thought it was interesting because, you know, he practices concealed carry all the time, but with a big giant weapon, which a lot of the people that I know all carry small three eighties or Keltec nine millimeters, um, really small, um, pocket guns that you could just slip in a pocket or a purse. And a lot of people do that and it's really good for them. Um, and with that becomes being more situationally aware because other than the fact that people following you, you have, you've added in the element of having a gun. You've brought a gun to whatever fight that you're going to be in. So if you're in a parking lot and there's a bunch of dudes that are fighting, you have to think about the fact that if you're in that situation, you've brought a gun now into that mix. So if it's just a bunch of dudes fighting and they're drunk, now you have a gun that someone can get a hold of. So being situationally aware of that, um, I was, talking to a friend of mine who lives in Cleveland and she's a girl. And I, you know, I kind of told her, Hey, you don't, you live in a fairly dangerous area because how transient Cleveland is. The population is probably around 3 million. I think that live in the greater, um, Cleveland area. And there's 11 million people that live in Ohio alone. That's not including the people who travel through Ohio just to go through that state. So you're adding the people dynamics, demographics of that area. So you have to think about, okay, it's not necessarily that this place is dangerous. It's the fact that there's more people. So you have to be more situationally aware of the place that you're in. And I guess some people try to mug her. And I told her, you know, you really do need to either buy a taser, um, buy a small 380 or a 9 millimeter, something you're going to have on you 24-7. And she wasn't really comfortable with having a gun. I'm like, well, it's not, it's not about the gun. It's about the tool that you're going to use, which is going to help you. And it's really important that in the world that we live in now, especially within American demographics, where men outnumber women by, I think it's five to three or something like that. So for every three women, there's five dudes or somewhere around that. I, I can't remember what the actual demographics are, but it is important. So it's not necessarily that it's going to be dangerous for women. It's just they need to be more situationally aware and take it on themselves because cops aren't there to help you. Their job isn't to help you. Their job is to show up to something that's already happened and write a paper document on it and then go to a court and then say, this is what happens. Their job isn't to go and protect you and fight crime. Their job is to enforce laws because we have law enforcement officers and not offensive protection people. And for you rangers out there, uh, they're not out there liberating the oppressed. 
the police job is not to liberate the oppressed. The job is to go out and respond to things that happen and solve that problem, which already started. So for anybody who's LGBT or anyone who's smaller, say, you know, in my opinion, young, young females that are between, you know, 15 and and 22 should automatically be enrolled in self-defense classes and weapons training because of the fact that they're in a vulnerable position. And if they're intellectually aware to take care of themselves, their situational awareness should be on the side of guarding themselves. So if you're a 14-year-old girl and you don't have the physical ability or training to fuck up a guy who's 300 pounds, you probably should equalize that situation with situational awareness and weapons and self-defense training. Um, that's contrary to most people's uh, upbringing and a lot of differences, but you should get it into your head that cops are not there to help you. That's not their job. Their job is not to liberate the oppressed like uh, the U.S. Army Rangers. Their job is to show up to a problem and solve that problem after it's already happened. So after you've been accosted, raped, hurt, their job is to write paperwork on it. Their job is not to defend you and to help you uh, in your rights. And I used to do that kind of work, so take it from me. You should change what you're doing <laughs> and uh, figure, figure it out. Really interesting. I was on, I, every now and then, doing Military Times Roulette, and Military Times had an article, U.S., Cuba to announce plan to open embassies. President Obama will announce Wednesday that the U.S. and Cuba have reached an agreement to open embassies in Havana and Washington, a senior administration official said. The announcement marks a major step in ending hostilities between the longtime foes. U.S. and Cuba have been negotiating the reestablishment of embassies following the December 17th announcement that they would restore ties. For Obama, ending Washington's half-century freeze with Cuba is seen as a major element of his foreign policy legacy. He has been touted the value of engagement and argued the U.S. embargo embargo on the communist island just 90 miles south of Florida was ineffective. Obama and Secretary of State John Kerry are expected to speak Wednesday morning about the embassy openings. The official insisted on anonymity, uh, anonymity because the official was not authorized to speak publicly about the matter ahead of the president. Since late 1970s, the U.S., United States, and Cuba have operated diplomatic missions called interests sections in each other's capitals. The missions are technically under the protection of Switzerland and do not enjoy the same status as full embassies. While the opening of embassies marks a major milestone in the thaw between the U.S. and Cuba, significant issues remain as the countries look to normalize relations. Among them, the talks on human rights, demands for compassion for the confiscated American properties in Havana, and damages to Cuba from the embargo, and possible cooperation on law enforcement, including the touchy topic of U.S. fugitives sheltering in Havana. That's weird. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Tell me your guys' thoughts on it. I think it's really interesting. I mean, you know, never in our lifetime has, um, at least in my lifetime, I'm 30, so I, I don't know of any time period in which we've reestablished negotiations between a country that has been our enemy, other than Russia, which happened when I was a child, so I, I really don't remember it. Um, tell us your thoughts. I really think that it's interesting. Um... What do you guys think that America should do with Cuba? Um, should we be their enemy? Should we be their friend? Should we go there and uh, drink lots of beers and get in trouble? Or should we completely embargo them with our own daily lives um, and continue our embargo as, as regular citizens of the USA? Um... Let me know any bands that you guys have that you guys would like to hear, especially bands that are not signed. So if they're not on any music label, um, if you have a band that you want to feature on Death Metal Chronicles, um, or you want to feature on our other podcast, Sex Positive Podcast, where it's more along the lines of relationships, um, dating, sex positivism, uh, stuff like that, 
Um, either or, whichever show you guys want to have your music featured on, definitely let me know. Um, whether it's just you and a guitar singing or if it's a full band, just as long as you don't have a label, I don't want to deal with label people. I'm not really in, in that business. I've featured one or two bands that do, that are on labels, but I'd rather not there. It's, it's just trouble in general. They don't own their music. The label owns the music and they don't have control over it. Um, only a few bands I've been able to, to work with actually are allowed to do that. So a great big pile of leaves. They're fairly big. They're on a label, but I just talked to the guy and they gave me verbal approval for that. I think one time I played War of Ages, um, they're definitely on a label. Their label person didn't even get back to me. They didn't even give a shit. Um, but it was really disrespectful to me because, you know, I talked to the guys, but they don't they don't actually have the approval to tell me if I can use their music. Um, so definitely send me any bands that you guys have that you'd like to hear. Um, specifically, if you're on your own, definitely send it to me. Um, you can hit me up on Facebook on the Death Metal Chronicles page. Or you can email us at deathmetalchronicles at gmail.com. Um, please check out the rest of our podcasts. And also look into the other podcasts we have, which is Sex Positive Podcast. Um, you can search it on YouTube or on SoundCloud. And you can check out our um, other podcasts on dating, relationships, stuff like that. We have some uh, contributing people um, talking about economics of dating. Um, another girl talking about um, her dating life. So definitely check that out. I hope you guys have an awesome Wednesday. And please enjoy the rest of the video. Death on a